Morning. I'm Mr. Harefield, William Harefield. I understand you're interested in me chalk. Aye, well, you've picked a day for it. There's a shipment leaving the jetty this afternoon, so there's a large order being processed. They've been carting the stuff from the quarry in double quick time this week to make up the order. It's for Story, Witty and Co. He's not buying me chalk, no, he's buying whiting. Whiting, it's the stuff we make from the chalk. It goes into his paints and then he sells it to merchants who supply the decorating trade. A lot of building work going on in Hull right now, so business is good. Ah, well, the quarry is that way, and the mill is that way, and the jetty too, of course, which is on the foreshore. But that's no mistake, you know. Oh, no. It's all part of the grand plan. Shall we? Well, you see, my father started this business in 1833. He went into partnership with a chap called Steele. They leased a quarry, and they became quarry masters. Not bad going for a general labourer, hey? Aye? General labourer he was, but he was ambitious and he wanted to better himself. I haven't always looked like this, you know. Oh, no, 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 no. We had it tough growing up. And like I said, my father was a labourer. He worked hard, long hours, and he was poorly paid. But he dragged himself up the ladder. You know, he couldn't even read or write, but he became a gentleman. A gentleman. If he could see me now, he'd laugh. Things were different back then, you see, though. He was a lime merchant. He burned lime. But he mainly supplied chalk rubble for foundations in roads and large building projects. You'd be amazed to see how much it's expanded. I haven't come from the quarry, no. I've come from the office. Well, I've come from home, but that's where the office is. Cliff House, up on the top, in Ezel. Anyway, let's have a look at the mill, shall we? I know it's old fashioned and a bit slow, but it's cost effective and, well, I like watching the sails go around. You see, there's five sails. Unusual, that is, five sails. You'd normally have four. Most flour mills around here have four sails. Because, well, you see, if you lose one, you can take the opposite sail off and run her on two. But you can't do that with five. But five is, apparently, more efficient. Marshalls have a steam mill. He runs on coal. He laughed when I bought this. <laughs> he said I was going backwards. I've proved him wrong. I have no fuel costs, you see. It runs on fresh air. And there's more of that than I need. And it's free. Come on. Some people think this is a flour mill. They've never heard of a whiting mill, you see, so they just assume that that white stuff coming out the other side is flour. Well, there's more to life than bread and biscuits, although my children might disagree. No, you can't underestimate the importance of what we do here. You see, whiting is in so many things, and that's one of the strengths of the business. We have so many different customers. Oh, you see, it's in paints, putties, Building products, like I mentioned earlier, it goes into linoleum. That's this new type of floor covering that's all the rage now. It can be mixed with linseed oil, you see, and the banks of the river all are lined with linseed oil mills. But the thing that surprises most people is your everyday uses. You know, such as your detergents, cleaning powders, pastes and cleaning stones. It's even in tooth powder. Should we have a look inside? Now, this mill was built in the early 1800s and I bought it at auction about eight years ago. And it's pretty much the same now as it was back then. It still uses the same old technology for processing whiting. Now, some would say it's a bit slow and outdated, but it's a simple process and there's now much can go wrong. You see, the chalk is brought from the quarry in a horse-drawn cart. It's crushed in here and then it's settled and then it's dried in the drying sheds out there. But well, best of all, it only takes six men plus my foreman to run it. Not like that rabble down at the quarry. There's ten times that many down there. Mind you, it's our bread and butter, that is. 
unprocessed chalk. It's what we've been dealing in for the past 30 odd years. It's the mainstay of the business. Now, if you're happy going up ladders, we can have a look at the top. Now, if you look out there, you can see the river. And just down there is our jetty. Now, I had that built in 64, just two years after buying the mill. And like I said, it's all part of the grand plan. Now, my father started this business, but I'm building it into something bigger. We've got two quarries now, but I'm looking at buying more. And now we've got the full process, we get more profit per ton of chalk. Makes sense. Now I'm in control of what happens to me chalk, where it goes, and how it gets there. And I don't just mean up the river to Ulm. No, I mean all over the world. <laughs>